Hello everyone, welcome to Canteen Cup. My name is Scott. How's everybody on this beautiful Sunday? Uh, today is my Sabbath. I am uh, enjoying a little bit of rest and respite from the week's toils and been pondering a few things and working on one or two little things. Uh, I wanted to talk to you, start talking about, you know, lessons learned. Some of the things that are going through my processes as I'm going through this lockdown and you know starting to think about you know how this could affect me maybe not how it has affected me but how it could uh, to give you an example in the past video I talked about needing to have more diesel fuel on the property for my tractor because when I'm not working working I'm here working and I've been using my tractor a whole lot more than I have been, so I need to add a little more fuel, and I'll take care of that once this crisis kind of, kind of, kind of, ah, kind of get, gets over and I can get back into more normal things. And so, as you know, I've been doing a lot of logging, uh, taking trees, cutting them up. I'm, I'm not felling them because they were already felled by a, a skid steer but I have to pull them out of a pile cut them up and get them ready to go to pulp and I use a chainsaw in fact I have two chainsaws I have a big one and then a, a smaller one and I use them both and uh, you know the thought comes across to me is what if I can't get you know gas or what if I break my chains now my chainsaws do get dull and I do have files to sharpen them. I've got I've got a file for each style blade, and I know how to do it so I can keep my blade sharp. But what if this got to the point where I couldn't get gas for my chainsaws and I still had to cut firewood? And so that got me, you know, thinking about in the army we call them pioneer tools. And you know, those those are basically tools other than your entrenching tool or your e-tool that you cut with and or dig with. Typically, when we talk about, you know, shovels and picks and axes and stuff, you know, garden tools, we don't always take as good a care of them as we should have. And so one of the things I did on some of my downtime is I went back through some of my stuff and I started going through my pioneer tools and cleaning them up and I'll show you a couple um, this is a, a Home Depot I think it's a Home Depot or a Lowe's axe it's made by a company called Luddle it's not the highest quality axe um, but I, I do use it. It was my grubbing axe for the longest time. And what I mean by that is if I was digging out a shrub or a tree stump, a small tree stump, and I had to cut the roots, this is what I would use. And it's it's not a bad axe. I mean, I, I took it and I, I cleaned it up and I, I put a nice edge on it. And it's got nice and sharp. And so it, it's, it's a usable axe. But even though if I use it as a grubbing axe, I may have to use it as a felling axe someday, so it helps to maintain it. And as you can see, I painted the head a little bit and I knocked all the rust off it. But, you know, looking after my stuff. Uh, the same thing for my splitting pole, maul. I can't talk today. This is an eight pound splitting maul. And even though weight is the driving factor, you still have to sharpen this a little bit. And it was rusting again. I just kind of took care of it. Um, this was an axe head that I had gotten in a trade, and all I, all I all I got was the axe head, and so I had to half what they call haft it, and I put a, a a haft on it, and I did this myself, and I finished it myself. When you buy when you buy an axe handle or a hatchet handle from a, uh, a dealer, they're not finished. You have to go back through and you have to make them smooth. If you don't, if you leave them rough, then your hands will blister. 
And so it took a while for me to get this done. And it's sanded, it's lightly stained. And then on this one, I put tongue oil, but it takes a while. And then I showed you my other axe that I had. Let's see how I can do this. This is an axe that came with that axe handle. And you can see there's about a 12 inch difference and also to the thickness of the axe, of the axe handles are different. The one over here that, that's currently on here is a, is a much thicker axe. I got this in a tray with this handle on it, but this handle is really like it for a boy's axe for maybe like a one and a half to a two pound head. And they stuck it on a three and a half pound axe head and I didn't feel safe with it. So I went and got myself a 36 inch hickory, select hickory wood handle. And I'm still working on it. I've got to sand it a few more times and then I wipe it down with mineral spirit. And I think this one I'm going to treat with boiled linseed oil. It's just a little bit different finishes. But again, you have to know how to haft an axe. Because if you have axes and you break the handle, you know, you got to be able to be able to replace them. Now, can I make an axe handle? No, but I can keep a couple spares. And I'll do that again when things get a little bit better. But that's really kind of what I want to talk about today is, you know, I'm still got a lot of yard work to do as far as lumbering and getting, getting things ready to cultivate. And I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks I'll be ready to start cultivating the soil. But on the days where I'm a little sore and I'm a little stiff and don't feel like working, I start, I'm starting to go through all my pioneer tools. You know, we take shovels for granted. We take picks you know, for granted, rakes for granted. We leave them outside. If it's got a wood handle, you let the weather get to them, then the wood gets brittle. And then right when you need it, it breaks. And so what I try to do, and I haven't been as successful because my last couple of years have been real busy, is I try about once a year as I go through and I'll, I'll hose off all my handles. I'll maybe even power wash them to get all the dirt off. And then if it's a wood handle, I'll retreat it. I'll sand it and retreat it. If it's a fiberglass handle, I'll make sure it's clean and not cracked. And, and, and then like for the shovels, you know, shovels are supposed to be sharpened too. You should sharpen your shovel and knock all the dust off and then repaint it. Yeah, the paint's going to come right off, but, you know, in the off season, you know, typically winter, you put them up ready to use the next year and that way they won't fall apart on you when you need them the most. Now I keep some Pioneer tools in my truck. I have a hatchet like this, but it's an S-wing with a steel handle and it's got a leather washer grip. And I treat that with neat with oil once, or once a year or so. And then I have a, a, a little bow saw that I keep in there. It's called a Sven saw. It's like a triangular shaped saw that you cut with. And Going through my supplies, I realized that I did not have my bow saw anymore. And I remembered when I was moving, when I picked up the bow saw, it was just rusted. I mean, everything was just rusted on it. It wasn't a very expensive one to begin with. And so we just, we just tossed it. So I was reminded that I need to get another bow saw. Because like I said, if I lose my chainsaws, um, no gas or the, you know, the motor brakes or chain brakes, whatever, they make a poor axe. You know, trying to swing one of those to cut a piece of wood, <laughs> this is wear you out. And so I gotta have a backup plan. Do I, you know, do I wanna play lumberjack and fell trees using a using an axe, a full-size axe? Not really, not anymore. But if I have to, I have to. I may move a little slower because I'm older, but I can still do it. And taking longer is still better than not doing it at all. All right, and one last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, I like knives, and I, and I buy knives, and I have some. I, I get them, I give them away, I give them to my kids, whatever, and I get some more. But I like knives, and I, I came across one that I kind of like, and I, I think I may use it quite a bit. I really kind of like it. It's made by Buck, 
and it's called the Pursuit Knife. It is made um, with their 420 high carbon steel blade. The spline on this is already sharp. I can, I can create sparks either on the jimping here or on the straight edge using a, a ferrocerium rod or a fire steel. So it does spark. Uh, when I got the edge, it wasn't that it wasn't that good, but I, you know, about five minutes on my sharpener and sharpening, I got it going, and I really kind of like it. It's about four and a half inch blade. Um, one thing that's kind of important to me is a handle. I've got a, a little bit of a large hand, and if I don't have enough handle circumference wise, it doesn't feel good. I can't get a good grip. But this has got a good grip. Um, this is a hard plastic, not a soft plastic. It feels good, and it's got jimping here. And it's got jimping here, which I thought was interesting for grip. But what I really like, it's just got jimping right there. And, you know, when I use a knife, a lot of times if I'm choking up on that, that's right where my finger goes. So it's nice to have a little purchase for it. So I hope I'll get her out in the, get her out in the woods and try her out a little bit. You know, right now, I'm mostly using a... Big machinery. I'm using my tractor. I'm using uh, those implements and the big chainsaw. I was trying to get my wood clear, but I, I'm looking forward to taking that out. But I wanted to share with you that I think it's a good knife. I like the design. I like the handle. It is a buck knife. It's their buck steel. Buck has been using 420 HC steel for a long time. They know the steel. They know how to heat treat it, and um, I've never had problems with buck knives. Um, you take care of a knife, you know, it'll take care of you. You know, typically for me when I, and I don't care much for the, the sheath, I may make another sheath out of leather, but yeah, you know. Um, one thing I do believe in is if you're going to have a job that needs an axe, use an axe. Try not to use your knife. You know, which means if you're going out in the woods and you know you're going to go out in the woods and you're going to have a backpack with you, carry a little hatchet. It does so much better than trying to turn your knife into a hatchet. That's the way I was kind of raised. We didn't have knives that you, you know, beat through with the, with the stick or whatever. Um, we, we had a hatchet, so. All right, that's it for today. Just a quick, you know, little video of what's going on in my world today and I guess I'm going to take this back in the house. I've still got to sand it and a few more times and then it'll be ready for the final coat. But that's a good solid hickory handle. The grain is going the right way and it feels good in the hand. I mean, I, I can, you know, I can, I can really lay into a tree with this. So, all right, well, enjoy your, enjoy your Sunday. If it's your Sabbath, get some rest. Um, take care of yourselves. Take care of your family. Um, you know, be careful with the virus. I, you know, I can't overly advise you except use whatever caution that you think is necessary for you and yours. Uh, it's still hospitalizing about 20% of the people. And, uh, you know, I hate to see you be one of them, especially if you know better. So that's all I got. Everybody stay safe and stay secure. We'll see you out there.